Hi, Cancer. Welcome to your November 2019 tarot card reading. Thank you so much for being here. Let's take a look at these cards. The essence of the reading as a whole is really like you guys are totally getting out of your own way, right? There is nothing but like a very clear path for you. The Knight of Coins is one of my favorite cards when it comes to like getting things done. I think you're feeling the effects of Jupiter like closing out his transit in your sixth house. You're like, okay, I have so many things I got to do. I got to work hard. I got to push. I have till, you know, year end to really finish all this stuff out. And there's a lot of focus and a lot of emphasis on just like what needs to be done. There's not a lot of question of like whether you like doing it or not. You're just doing what you have to do. And when you're in this mindset, what I feel is happening is it's taking you out of like out of time, like it's putting you in this flow. It's putting you in this amazing flow state, which gives you enhanced creativity, better ideas, better solutions. And I don't know, I often see the Knight of Coins as like, he's one of those people that works hard, but it's like, it's not hard for him. Does that make sense? Like he works hard and he puts in the time, but it's not hard work. It's just, you know, it's just progress. And there's so much progress oriented stuff going on in your life of like, I want to buy this. I want to get here. I want to do this. And it's there's not a lot of fear or worry about how it's going to come about. So this is the epitome of someone like setting a manifestation or setting an intention and then just doing it and not being like, where am I going to get the money for it? And how is this ever going to happen? And when is this going to happen? And there's no pressure. He's very relaxed. The thing that I like about him is how he's standing still. So it's like you're making stuff happen, but you're standing still at the same time. And from the outside looking in, people are going to be like, what the heck are you doing? Like, you're just standing there. You're not doing anything. And you're like, yeah, don't worry. Like, it's happening. Because you know in your heart that you are affecting and instilling change in the universe and that you are creating a whole world for yourself. Like this is probably one of the very first times in Cancer's like past couple of years where you really do not care what anybody thinks. And the more people kind of laugh at you or the more people kind of like berate you for like they want to see results and they want to see this and they want you to show them what what you're doing and you're like nah man like I got this don't worry like I know it's working I know it's happening and I don't need to prove anything to you so there's just this kind of very quiet self-confidence that's not self-confident to show other people it's just that you just are confident that's it right so when we look at the environment the environment is the emperor. Now, the emperor came out twice, and he came out smack dab in the middle of the nine card block that I always pull. So it's telling me that you're either dealing with an emperor or that this is you, that you are your own environment. I'm going to try to talk to it both ways, but if it's you, it's you. If it's someone else, it's someone else, okay? The emperor is the standard. The emperor is how how you hold yourself up to your own expectations. See, again, the emperor answers to nobody because who is an emperor going to answer to? You know, there, there, there is no council unless you want a council. There are no citizens unless you want citizens, right? An emperor does what an emperor does. He makes no apologies and he just moves forward. Um, I think you can tell. Like, you can tell you're on the brink of a major breakthrough and you are like I can see it in the cards like you're on the on the brink of a major breakthrough and the emperor just says like I know it's coming I don't need to make it happen I just know it's coming so that's why you continue to do the sort of day-to-day -day things if you're dealing with an emperor this is someone who's very much on your pace I see these two actually very, very similar in a lot of ways. Similar in their confidence, similar in their attitude, similar in what they owe people, which is nothing, and similar in how they create. Like, they just do it, you know? There's no complication. There's no drama. There's no fuzziness at all. In fact, actually, both of these can come out quite dry, and their passion can seem dry. 
You know, like we always kind of define a passion for a, a, a thing, right? A passion for a path as being always so enthusiastic and always being so loud about it and always going and being obsessed about something. But these two, they kind of redefine passion a little bit. We, we know passion can have many different meanings. And I know there are going to be those people that are like, well, passion really means suffering. Like, okay, passion in the way that we more often use it, okay? That when we have this passion, it doesn't matter how enthusiastic we are. It's how much time do we dedicate feeling about it? How much time do we dedicate thinking about it? And you can be very quiet. And that's what I think is a very reserved, very Cancerian passion that's like the fire on the inside, but no one can feel the heat, you know? And that's actually what give, makes you more powerful. And if this is your significant other, then I think you guys are going to move mountains this month and then the months to come because it's just like, come on, partner, let's do it. It's just me and you, and we really don't need to care about anything or anyone. This is our one shot at this particular lifetime. Let's just go for it. And what I love is the first card that came out in this small block is the Seven of Wands reverse, which again, it's like, I don't care all these things that are coming at me. I don't care. Like, you can, you can throw things at me. That's fine. You can give me your opinions. You can give me your advice. That's fine. Um, but to you, I think it's just a whole bunch of empty echoes. Just everyone's voices. Everyone is just like, da, 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 da. And you're just like, it's just, you know, completely unfazed, completely unbothered. Because they could never have the passion that you have. And that, you know, and their passion doesn't matter. And, and you having to owe them an explanation or to show them results like, it doesn't matter, you know? Um, people are just going to have a lot of opinions all together the next few months because they're trying to get outside of their own kind of mess and they're trying to get outside of their own feelings and emotions about things. And so they kind of project that onto you. And especially with the emperor environment, I mean, it's just complete armor. I mean, you're wearing armor on both counts, right? you got a suit of arms underneath all of it, so... It's all just going to ricochet anyway. And so if you're like, well, if it's going to ricochet anyway, then why am I going to put any effort or emphasis on fighting back? I just, I simply don't see you taking a defensive position at all because it doesn't merit that. Let someone think what they think. Let someone say what they say. Like, who cares? The more you can let these things ricochet, the more energized you're going to have for these really amazing things that are coming up for you. Um, this is a month of peace, which I love because Scorpio season is fifth house season, which of course, fifth house, emperor, it's all very royal and majestic, has a lot to do with the sun energy, which also, again, the yellow card coming, the yellow color, excuse me, coming through here with the sun, that third chakra, empowerment, confidence, all of that. Um, and then also here's the piece, you know, I don't see that cancer is wavering in any way, shape or form. Cancer is not about to self-sabotage. They're not about to sway from their direction. They're not about to let someone else pull them off track. I don't know, like you can be presented with myriad, you know, of options. You can be presented with a lot of different um, pathways. And yet I think you choose none because for you, there is only one. For you, there is only one right path, and that is it. If you're a Cancer who is still struggling with like, oh my god, I don't know what my path is. What is she even talking about? Stillness. The reason is because you may still be getting a little bit caught up in, in what the world thinks or what the world expects. Not even that. It's what you think the world expects of you, right? It's like the perception within the perception. So if you stop playing that game with yourself, that very quiet, that voice that has been quiet will suddenly become very loud and you will become very sure and then there's no stopping you, right? Because we're talking to a cardinal group of people, right? Cancer, Cancer rising, Cancer sun, Cancer moon. You guys are cardinal at your core. So cardinal energies, they pick a path and they go. Like there's, oh my God, like Aries, Libra, Cancer, Capricorn. Like you guys know, we know how you work. Like we know how it works. So if you're feeling swayed, 
you're not listening and it's very important for you to quiet your surroundings to quiet your life a little bit so that you can hear because what's coming up for you you guys Jupiter is going to be transiting your seventh house all year next year so like this year was all about oh my god the eclipses and oh my god Saturn Pluto and next year is like oh my god Jupiter in the seventh house like wow right <laughs> so it's a uh, expansion in love and connection it's expansion in business partnerships and collaborations and all sorts of things that you're wanting to do and the lovers is kind of like that promise that you are going to find that wholeness right you are whole within yourself and therefore you create a wholeness externally as well that is this promise Again, there's always an element of choice, especially when these two come out side by side. But there really is no choice when you're following your highest self. One of the hardest things that we need to learn how to do as human beings is to learn how to listen to ourselves. And because you are ruled by the moon, which is our intuitive voice, our subconscious voice, that that kind of voice is probably a little bit easier to hear, but can also get, right, as the moon travels throughout the 28-day cycle, it gets activated over and over and over and over, like coming in contact and squaring and trining and sextiling and all these angles all the time. Full moon, new moon, always kind of refreshing. We wonder why cancer is so sensitive. Um, well, because, you know, it can be kind of hard to discern with all those activations going on all the time and all the tides going on all the time, like what is the base message of that voice? But once you really connect with it, it you can't not hear it anymore, right? You can't be oblivious to it anymore. Like, no, like when you know, you know. And the lovers is where most of us want to be, right? The card um, is the, ruled by the number six which is a number that's ruled by Venus, which again has a lot to do with partnerships and money and self-confidence, self-worth, possessions, all these wonderful things that are both of the world and of the spiritual world too. So it's, it's twofold. When the outside world matches the inside world, when you feel rich and abundant in your soul, then all of that can come to fruition in, in the reality. And again, I like the emperor energy as bridging the gap between the spiritual and the, the material, right? Because you can have the best of both. And I think the emperor is like, it's time to have the best of both. Boom. And there is no self-sabotage, which I love, which is happening with the seven of swords reversed. You're kind of looking at these two cards here. Um, if I can kind of hold these up in a way that you can see. This is how the cards are situated, which you'll see when I put the camera down. And I see you kind of looking at all the ways that you were swayed in the past and all the kind of arguments that you made for or against things in the past. And you're like, oh my God, like I was so dumb. Like, why did I do that to myself? Why did I ever self-sabotage? Why did I ever betray myself and betray my my?" higher self you know so now you're stepping into your divinity in a way that you haven't I don't know that you've really been able to do it this way or at this magnitude before because you just simply hadn't learned the lessons yet right obviously but now that the Saturn Pluto conjunction thing is is done and over with um or is going to be coming up in January there's no you know, you're solidifying the change itself rather than solidifying the past psychological behaviors or whatever, right? If you were dealing with someone who cheated on you, that hurt you, that stole your money or whatever, like that's officially in the past now. Like I heard something that changed my life the other day and I've been sharing it with pretty much everybody. So if you look at what is, like your reality, if you look out into your existence and you say, yeah, but that person still hurt me or they still took my money and my bank account is still depleted. If you look at what is, you are immediately looking at the past because as much as we like to talk about how this whole existence is still a big present moment, it doesn't really take you away from this timeline. Like we still have to go through life in a kind of start to finish past, present, future fashion, right? So five seconds from now, 
that moment is immediately going to come from the future and then be pushed into the past. So there really actually isn't a present moment ever. So that's all there is and that never existed, right? A present moment. So if you look at what is and you think, wow, okay, well, if what is immediately becomes my past, then every single second of every single day it can be considered my future. And when you start thinking in that way, you're like, okay, what do I want my future to be, right? And you completely start rewriting the script. That's not news to anybody. I think we all know that. It's just kind of a different way of really looking at it when people try to tell you to be realistic. They're trying to tell you to continue to live in the past. And that's not what an emperor does. This is actually a card of Aries. Again, another cardinal archetype which is full forward, full motion. We are in Scorpio, which is a Mars, a Mars ruled sign. So the Mars energy, point A to point B, and there's just simply no stopping it. Remember that the whole universe revolves around you, right? If we are in fact living in an infinite universe, then every single person is the very center of their universe. So here you are, I think, Cancer, this is your energy. Here you are, the very center of your universe and kind of acting as this beautiful magician and creating so many wonderful things for yourself which are coming through flawlessly. I see no resistance here whatsoever. Um, we have the two angels, okay, two angels with the red wings, which the red of the robe indicating passion and that root chakra telling me that any kind of issues that you've had in the world with money, with housing, with shelter, with paychecks, all that kind of stuff, that all of those issues in 2020 are going to be resolved so that your soul can evolve and expand the way it really wants to with a Jupiter and Capricorn. Um, the judgment is the clarity and the understanding of like why you had to go through what you had to go through because you did. You had to go through it and you did and now you're on the other side of it or you will be on the other side of it and now all of a sudden things start making sense and you start feeling that calm and that peace, which is exactly what I was saying with the Two of Swords. I love these sword cards. They are the most peaceful in addition to the Six of Swords as well. Um, the Four of Swords is about making, giving your, uh, making time for mental rest, making time for separation, maybe a hermit mode for some of you. Um, but really it's not for the sake of getting away from people, it's for the sake of like letting, letting things connect, like letting the dots connect. And you guys are big with connecting the dots, right? Cancer with Je Gemini in the 12th house, like you guys need things to make sense. You need the connected dots. You need the big picture in order for it to like impact you in a positive way. So the Four of Swords is the time you give yourself for things to make sense for your path to become clear, for your decisions to feel sure. And then when you emerge from this, like I said before, like your past or what is your reality immediately becoming a part of the past. And therefore you are free to write whatever future you hope to achieve. And I'm telling you, you are manifesting like a mofo right now because what you're looking at is exactly the 10 of coins. So whatever it is, Yes, money. Yes, love. Yes, new careers. Yes, changing location. Like, yes to all of it. Ask for all of it. You can have all of it. You don't have to limit yourself to just like one thing. Like, okay, I just want a $30,000 increase in my salary. Like, okay, great. But maybe you can ask for something else too. Maybe you can ask for a reunion with this, uh, you know, with your husband or your wife to like, wow, where you start having passionate sex again. Like, yes, ask for it. Ask for that condo in South Beach. Ask for this. Ask for that. Because you're just going to get closer and closer and closer to it. Right? You might as well ask for it. Because it can't be yours if you don't ask for it. If you keep it realistic, you are limiting yourself. Realism kills right now. Maybe that's why I'll name the video. Realism is what's going to kill you. So... Don't keep it realistic. Keep it idealistic. Keep it big picture. Keep it 
in the realm of what you could perceive as impossible and watch as it suddenly becomes a possibility for you. Okay, let's put the camera down. We'll continue pulling out the cards, all right? Thank you so much. Take care. All right, Cancer, so you can see how all this energy is surrounding the emperor as though he is truly the center of his own vortex. Um, he is the one that gets to pick what becomes real and what doesn't. So let's go ahead and take an astrology card and clarify this Knight of Coins. Aries, okay, boom, you guys, the environment is very Mars. The environment is very, like, go get it. And even this energy, while it is still standing still, both of these, they're still very steady, they're very stable, they're not doing nothing. Right? What did I say in the beginning? It's very productive. It's slow and people might not get it and people might not see the results, but it's the Mars energy of really showing up for that which you're hoping for. And the Aries is like full on, full charge, like, yes, let's do it. And that's kind of the quiet passion that I really love. When you apply a Mars Aries energy during Scorpio season to a Cancer, um, it's all like this like in, inner heart-driven fire that is pushing forward and creating this amazing reality. So, oh my God, you guys, these cards are so like, I love, I love tarot so much and an oracle card. Have faith in your dreams, waxing crescent moon. Yeah, have faith in your dreams, because why not? Why, should, why shouldn't you have faith? If you don't have faith in your dreams, why could you ever expect the universe to have faith in your dreams too? Right? Okay. So. Ugh. Stop it. Card of Cancer. Amazing. Let's um, pull out the clarifiers. So these are going to be the cards we talk about in the comprehensive. If you want to check it, check it out, the link will be down below. We'll talk for about another 20 to 25 minutes uh, during that reading so you can get a more clear idea of, of the story. So let's take a look. Okay, one more for the Knight of Coins here. Ooh, another Three of Wands. Can we just, with all the yellow, how much we love all the yellow? It's so amazing. Clear path, perfect, so beautiful. There is going to be a naysayer. I knew it. There had to be, there's probably going to be multiple, multiple people that just kind of laugh, you know, and they're just like, oh my God, cancer, what? You're being so ridiculous. What are you even thinking? How could you even be saying that? It's probably in your best interest to keep your big picture stuff either only to yourself, right? Like don't tell anybody or tell only your closest confidant like your husband or your wife even if you're dating you know i wouldn't be talking about that kind of stuff with someone that you're casually dating keep it to yourself keep it real right because then you can like talk about it afterwards you know you can talk about it when it's done when it's already become something true all right look at this beautiful lover's card here there's the love of self the confidence, the pride, and there's the work. I'm not going to say it's going to be easy. I'm not going to say that you can still just sit there on the couch and, you know, develop that passive income that pays you a million dollars a month, right? There's still things that need to be done. You have to match it in the real, in the real world, um, but that it will pay off, you know? Eye on the Lovers. Another card of Cancer. All the Cancer cards coming out. I often see this as very Cancerian as well because it's kind of like the, the shell on the outside and kind of the vulnerability on the inside. The minute you start indulging in the thoughts of it's not possible, I don't deserve it, that's the minute that the stuff kind of slips through your fingers, okay? So you have to be conscious. You can't stop those thoughts from coming into your mind. They're still going to come in. But when they come in, it's like, okay, well, what are you going to do with those thoughts? Are you going to cling to them? Are you going to give them credence? Are you going to be sad about those thoughts? Or 
are you going to thrive in spite of those thoughts, right? So how are you going to make allow those thoughts to make you feel? Because you can have a bad thought of like, I don't deserve it, and then just tell it to screw off and then just start feeling passionate again, right? You don't have to give it momentum. One of the things that people really struggle with is like they have some kind of a thought and then all of a sudden it becomes a truth. And then this truth becomes some kind of reason for like barely getting up in the morning, right? But it's all just kind of in thought form, which means it's not a reality. Okay, another, I like the Six of Swords. I really do like the Four, the Two, and the Six of Swords. Ooh. Ooh, a Four to clarify the Four. Amazing. Okay, let's look at the Three of Wands. Okay, we officially got three Emperors that came out. See, you're being asked to, to thrive in spite of hardship. Exactly. You're being, you're being asked to thrive in spite of hardship um, because that hardship doesn't define you. You're being asked to remain aligned to your higher self, which is a very hard thing to do when we have certain circumstances occurring in our life. But it's a matter of the consciousness involved. Like, can you be conscious enough to not be pinned down by those things, right? Pinned down Ten of Swords. Okay. And then we have the, the best card, I think, that we could have asked for at the end of this reading is the World card. So that's where we will pick up for the comprehensive. If you guys want to join, you are more than welcome. Link will be down in the description. Thank you so much for everything. I wish you nothing but the best for the rest of Scorpio season. And I will see you in a few weeks for Sagittarius season. Thank you so much. Take care.